Do you want more well, to cuddle with you? I've been waiting. Okay. I'm in the cookie. We're going to cuddle mm -hmm. and then we're going to do breakfast, right? Yeah, we got a couple minutes, buddy. Daddy's almost done. See you later, baby. Ready? Crack. Crack one. I need to get used to new cracks. These are getting small. What is Daddy's super bright headlights? yourself to the camera so you can look right at the camera introduce yourself as if you were meeting someone new for the very first time like what you would say about yourself my name is Tim Paulson uh, I'm a father I'm a husband and I am also a CrossFit athlete and an affiliate owner and have been for the last decade my CrossFit career started um, it started just for fun uh, I had recently quit hockey and a friend of mine on the hockey team at Ithaca College introduced me to CrossFit. Uh, you know, basically I was looking for some other outlet because I was done playing hockey and I wanted a, another way to be physically kind of engaged with something. So I started CrossFit in the fall, winter of like 2011 and then I did what's called the CrossFit Open in the spring of 2012 and it was awesome. I was like, wow, I can compete in this. You know, there's, there's an outlet for my competitive nature, kind of like for my, my driven nature and this is great because I don't have hockey anymore. The way the CrossFit season is structured currently, you compete in the World Wide Open, so anybody and everybody can sign up. It's literally the biggest fitness community event on the planet. Our gym here in Ithaca does it, you know, gyms around the world do it. The goal is just to take your yearly fitness checkup, push your boundaries, um, and then it's also the start for the competitive season. From there, you advance to quarterfinals, and there's different divisions in quarterfinals for age groups, for individuals, for teams, and you compete in your respective division. Once you get out of the quarterfinals, if you qualify, the field's getting smaller. So from the open, we take less people to the quarterfinals. Then from quarterfinals, we'll take less people than that to the semifinals. And that's going to be your first in-person competition. So the first two stages are online. Semifinals is in-person, and that's where the best of the best are competing for a spot at the CrossFit Games. The first time I qualified for the games in 2017 it took me obviously a couple years of, you know, kind of frankly working my ass off to get to a point where I could qualify for the games. And that year we had like, I think it was about 70 people from our gym come out to regionals. It was incredible because obviously they were there all weekend. It was really cool. They were cheering really loud. They were going crazy. And I found out after the fact that there was a group of like eight or 10 of them that had already booked hotels, flights, and bought tickets to the CrossFit Games. Because they kind of had a feeling that like 
it was going to be my year. Like I'd been close a couple times before that. So like going into regionals before I'd even qualified, they had already spent thousands of dollars to go out to the games and support me because they thought I could do it. I'd like to think that I will hopefully excel in that dynamic as a teammate. My life has always been very kind of team oriented, you know, whether that's growing up playing hockey or, you know, being a small business owner, like you're part of a small team. You know, it's like I have a couple of core people and like you're constantly learning different communication styles, interacting and like it's all it's all the same. You know, it's all it's all communication. It's all how you get along with people, read people, you know, hopefully build them up. There's been plenty of times that I was probably too far into it. You know, like I, w I was sacrificing too much on other aspects of my life and the gym community has certainly borne the brunt of that at various times. I have not been the best leader at various points over the years because I've gotten too into and too obsessed and you know, my athletic pursuits and my drive to better myself has taken over and it's taken over too much and it's led to me you know, dropping the ball in other areas of my life at, life at various points, but they've still always been there. I've never seen him more relaxed, but also more focused. So it's really exciting. It's exciting to see the change. It's exciting to see him grow. And it's kind of exciting just to watch him fully and comfortably like step into his role and just say like, I'm gonna put it all out there. During my career as an individual, frankly, my goal was never to win the CrossFit Games. Part of me knew that like, the way that I was going about my journey and the things that I was trying to do outside of being an athlete would not allow that. And it wouldn't have felt like a realistic goal to set for myself given what I was, the sacrifices I was willing to make, the journey that I was on, and the journey that I knew other athletes in the sport were on. Oh, never mind. Yeah. So, Taylor, it's working simultaneously in male, male, female, female. Yeah. It's like really weird to relinquishing control to like, oh, like, no, so like, this is how we're gonna like, no, like, show me so, so I can, like, what do I do? Yeah, like, like mentally calm yeah. down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Man, so I was yeah. just gonna see what, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited to see where this goes. The vibe that I'm getting right now, you know, from my teammates is is a very good one. Like we're we're going to be a I think a very cohesive dangerous unit. <laughs> Tim was never going to beat Matt Frazier or Justin Medeiros. However, that doesn't mean that he didn't train every day to beat them and do as best he could and be the best version of himself at the games, and I think he did that every year. So I think he always knew he was never going to win the games until this year. On paper, they 100% should win the games. Andrea and Taylor are the most decorated team's women in the sport. So as long as Tola and Tim can keep up with Andrea and Taylor, 
I don't even know that podium is the option, it's first. I grew up in a team environment, so like it was a little bit of an adjustment to the individual side of things. But for me, because the individual side of CrossFit is very much an individual sport, you're always racing against yourself. Even when you're on the competition floor with 20 other people, you're still racing against yourself. So even when other people were around during quarterfinals, it didn't feel like it changed much because at the end of the day, I'm always racing myself. And like I'm always pushing myself to my limits and someone else being around me isn't necessarily going to affect how much I can do that or not. You know, it's like my limits are my limits. So then it's like I should put myself in the hurt locker on the workout and if it me up for the clean and jerks, yes. Okay. Because I just wanted to confirm that if I get off the workout and I'm here for 45 seconds and Tola's well, just lifting by yeah. himself. That's the thing. Like, There's nobody better in the world. It was probably one of the most fun competition experiences I've had. This whole year is going to be a lot of new stuff, and new is exciting. It's true with anything in life, so like, there's going to be that piece of it, but it was just fun. When I was younger, whether or not I made the games and how well I did, like I let it carry far too much weight as far as how I looked at myself as like a person. You know, there was too much, there was too much, you know, sense of self and there was too much, um, you know, there was too much inherent value that I placed on my placing on the leaderboard on whether or not I made the games, how I did at the games, like all these things. And it's like, Obviously now I've learned enough hard lessons that I know that, you know, again, who I am as a person goes way, way beyond where my placing is at the games or whether or not I even make the games. Is that daddy's blue car? Hey, this side. Hey, come here, wait. Hey, wait, wait, wait. See the car? It's moving? Okay, come on. Daddy's gonna bring you down to the gym and then mommy's gonna come get you in a little bit so that daddy can finish setting up. You wanna go to the gym? Going into 2019, I had had a bit of time to kind of refocus a little bit and recenter around like how I should be competing, what I should be focusing on in events, in preparation and all that stuff. So like. Mentally going into 2019, I was in a much better headspace. Just ready, like I was ready to compete the way that I knew how. And then I just fail. The 
that was a really, I think like probably one of the biggest pieces of my career for me personally, as far as like a growth and development standpoint, just because I just failed. There was nobody to blame but myself. And it was just like, it was a complete and utter debacle. Being a CrossFit athlete meant so much to me and I didn't have a lot of perspective outside of the sport of CrossFit at that point. And it just felt like I had lost everything. Cause it was like, I'm just, I'm literally that guy who had a crappy year last year. I show up, I'm gonna get cut in the first event this year. It felt like my career was over. It felt like I had failed in every way, shape or form that you could possibly fail. And it was just like powerfully demoralizing. I think by virtue of necessity at that point, I figured out that like I had way too much priority and focus on Tim Paulson, the athlete, and I'd had no perspective on what Tim Paulson, the athlete, meant to Tim Paulson, the person. Realizing that I am more than this gigantic failure to the people that love me, they were just there and they didn't care. That was like very powerful to me. That event and the response from the people around me in that event was like the big impetus for like realizing that this way that you view yourself is not sustainable or really healthy. That fall, like Caitlin and I went, we went to Ireland, I competed at Filthy 150. I'm really glad I had that moment because it was like, I went there, I competed, I had the exact same mindset I did going into the 2019 games and I crushed it. So like that was like a really nice bounce back and affirmation of like, okay, like I was doing things right. I was ready to be the athlete that I think I was supposed to be. And now I also have this other superpower. It feels like a superpower of just, I am more than an athlete. I think that was a time when he finally figured out I'm not defined as a CrossFit athlete. You know, like who I am is more important than whether I make the games, whether I get on the podium, et cetera. That was a horrible lesson to learn, but I think that really flipped the switch. And then, you know, like he just got better and better and better as an athlete and a person after that. Mr. Wes. Good job. You're swimming with Mimi, Poppy, and Mommy? Yeah. Is this so fun? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, so when I watched him individually at the games, my strain and my whoop goes up to like 17 or an 18, even if I didn't work out. Uh, and I don't do that when I regularly work out. 10 seconds. <laughs> it's a problem. Stand by. Let's go, Tim.
Oh, also, guys, um, it took me f like 45 minutes to fall asleep last night because I couldn't stop thinking about that workout and how it took three sets to do 30 thrusters and I f***ing <laughs> hated myself. <laughs> what was that? 45 fast or slow. It's very slow for me. I'm usually asleep within like 4.5 seconds. I'm not thinking about the end right now, even though I know this is my last season. I don't want any pressures or any anything to cloud the joy that I've had doing this for the last decade. Because it feels like if I expect the end and know the end is coming, I'll appreciate this more. But at the same time, I might also put more pressure on myself because I know that it is, you know, the end. Seeing Tim compete this year, he's the best part of it by far has been how happy he is. He's not as hard on himself if he misses one aspect of his training. He's feeling a little bit more comfortable, it seems like, being able to shift days around instead of feeling like he has to do everything in his training, you know, on the, the same day that it's actually prescribed. Um, he just seems like a much happier, lighthearted version of himself. He's never competed happy. He's always so stressed out. He'll be so stressed out that he's almost in tears. And then he goes and he competes and he comes back and some things he's happy about and some things he's really upset about. And we debrief and we move forward and the whole weekend is usually like that. This year, it was all smiles all the time. He got in the pool with Wes and I in the middle of the weekend and like hung out and was dad mode and not just, I need to go take a nap, I need to go eat food, I need to go be athlete mode, and that was a really nice change. Tim looks like he's about to rip the head off of somebody. He's like pacing back and forth. He freaks me out when he does this. I mean, did you watch him in the clean and jerk uh, relay at the game? <laughs>
I've had a lot of fun, you know, competing as an individual, a lot of really cool, like, memories, but this is, like, easily the most, like, in the moment fun that I've had doing CrossFit, so it's been a blast. We've put our heart and soul into raising our kids and to see them as um, wonderful adults is just, there's yeah. nothing better. Yeah. And yeah. that's what they are. Yeah. They don't have to be the most amazing athlete, but to be the most amazing person that they can be is yeah. that's what life is yeah. all about. If they get on the podium, it would be phenomenal. Whether they finish first or 40th, Tim will be who Tim is. Um, that 2019 year showed that. I mean, getting bumped in the first workout was devastating. Um, and over time, he's more than covered up that weakness. We've always said and taught the kids, I, I think you'll learn more from the tough mm -hmm. breaks than from you the do. Disappointments. Yeah. I can't imagine my 22, 23 year old self ever to have expected myself to have this career and the, the level of you know success that I have been able to achieve, you know, in the sport or otherwise. And if he was looking up at me right now, I hope he would say, don't take it for granted because it's something really special. It's been a long 10 year journey, but I mean, it's been pretty awesome. I hope I don't take it for granted, but my younger self who bombed out of a regional and felt a little lost, a little confused, would have killed for the opportunity to do a lot of the things that I've been able to do. I think Tim would have been successful in anything he decided to do. Run, go guys! He would be successful if he wanted to stay an accountant. He'd probably be running his own firm by now. When he sets his goals, he's gonna achieve them. I think he would have been the same person, just thriving in a different area.
I travel, like it was really hard for me to be away, but like they were the ones making the sacrifice. Like it wasn't me that was like, yes, I might have been sacrificing family time, but like they were the ones who were actually making sacrifice of like having to deal with the repercussions of like what I was trying to pursue. It's just not easy. The demands of training, the time that it takes away from our personal schedule, the time that it takes away from, you know, it, it gave us a ton of incredible once in a lifetime opportunities. So like, there's obviously a give and a take, but like, there's a lot of sacrifice in the hours that you have to put in, the Saturdays that you have to train, the Sundays that you have to train, the vacations that you maybe put off or take later in the year. Yeah. But it's kind of hard to see where like those memories and opportunities could outweigh some of those like daily sacrifices. Seven. Go, Taylor. Seven or eight. Crushing it, Taylor. Let's go, babe. Yes, Mama. Stop. Stop. I will stop as best I can. Yeah, they're just having a good, they're having a great weekend. They must be fueled by rage. <laughs> must be. <laughs> Something like that. When we're packing up to get on the plane to come back to Ithaca and, you know, we're talking about nothing related to CrossFit, it's gonna feel so strange. Probably gonna cry when all of this is done just because we've made so many incredible relationships. We've had so many of our best friends come through in the CrossFit community. We would have never had the opportunity to meet these people if it weren't for him working so incredibly hard, but also for the opportunities that he, you know, said yes to in this kind of crazy journey that he's been on. So for that coming to an end, it's, it's a lot, it's sad.
getting a hold of Wes was like, I don't know, this year's been really hard. There's been a lot of travel, being away from home, and just like, he gave me like a really big hug. He missed his dad this weekend, and I think this year too. Oh man, what I would say to all my family and friends, first off would just be, thank you. There have been times I've dropped the ball and they've always been there and they've given me a second opportunity or a third and I wouldn't be where I am without their support and the gym wouldn't be where it is without their patience with me pursuing this. Um, so I, I mean, I guess a long way of saying thank you for just believing in me and never giving up.